Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be the Central Finance Part 2 video. So these are the topics that we'll be discussing today. And we're going to start off with what is replicated to Central Finance. In the previous video, we talked about the concept of real-time replication. And there are a list of objects and data that can be replicated to Central Finance when it's needed. Again, keep in mind that we're talking about Central Finance and SAP S4 HANA 2020. In the list, we have FICO postings, cost objects, activity rates, material cost estimate, internal order, WBS and projects, so on and so forth. So this is just to keep you guys aware on what can be replicated to Central Finance. Moving over to high-level configuration, I mentioned here that we're going to discuss a high-level CFIN configuration. Because of this, we're going to group some tasks and arrange them so that we have this linear flow. This will give you a simplified version so that you get an overview of what needs to be done, at least on a high level. Recall that in our previous video, I talked about the architecture. And this time, please consider or recall that the SLT as well as the MDG will be over here in the central finance or target system. So MDG will be on top and SLT is deployed as an add-on to this SAP s hana system. For now, let's keep in mind that we have a grouping of three parts. First will be central finance, general setup, and MDG mapping. Second will be initial load. And the third one will be real-time replication. You have this image over here for reference. And I've categorized them as A, B, and C. First, for central finance, general setup, and MDG mapping, this is activities and tasks related to the target system, which is CFIN, MDG mapping, and of course, there are tasks involved for the source system. For example, if there are ECC activities that will include installation of several SAP nodes as a prerequisite to proceeding with central finance. And the main idea here is to get these systems ready or prepare them for the next group of activities, which is related to initial load. Some examples of activities and tasks would be the following. So we have business function activation in the central finance target system, configuration of the AIF runtime, RFC and logical system configurations, configuring of decimal places for currency. We do have a lot of uh, other tasks here as an example, and I have provided some T codes, even the programs involved. I have a couple of screenshots over here. This is an example of a business function activation. Here you'll see that central finance is activated, and you'll know that it's already activated when you have the plan status as business function will remain activated. Another screenshot is an example of using the MDG mapping tool for mass upload. This is using a .csv file. You see here that I'm in the transaction code where I'm able to manage the mappings related to central finance and I can choose the mapping entity. So this one, I have selected general ledger account. I can specify the source system, the user action would be upload mappings, and I do have the CSV file uh, indicated over here as well as the separator. Standard test run option is also provided, so when you execute this, you should have the sample result on the right side. Next is a screenshot of consistency check via this T code, so you'll see that I have chosen the action execute. I can choose the source logical system, the source company code, and I can choose which groups will be involved. So if I'm talking about a GL account, I want to check if the FI configuration for GL account is consistent between the source system and this um, central finance system. It would be a helpful tool. I also added some examples of source system activities and tasks. So this would be 
applying the SAP notes to enable SAP source systems for central finance integration. You also have the concept of assigning the authorization to the SLT user. You have the configurations involved for the source system as well as preparation activities for initial load, which is the next step. For initial load, uh, ideally you want certain postings, cost objects, data, or other needed information to be in the central finance system. And you want to carry this out so that real-time application runs smoothly. And one good example is to consider the object dependencies that are done during initial load. So it's populating your target system with all the details or the data that you need in CFIN. And if you want to carry over postings or move them over to CFIN, then that will be the concept of initial load. In terms of the ordering of initial load execution, it will be first you need to load the cost objects, then you want to perform initial load for FICO postings, and then lastly you want to do initial load for CO internal postings. I have added an example scenario here. It's really good to consider the prerequisites or the, the data dependencies involved. I mentioned here that if you want to perform an initial load for FICO postings under company code 1000, for example, those postings will have cost objects because let's uh, consider that your accounting document postings will have cost centers, for example, or maybe internal orders. And if you were to replicate that um, straight to central finance, there would be an error. Central finance wouldn't know what the internal order is or what the cost center is it's not yet familiar and so in order to prevent those types of errors i've added these examples it's good to have the cost objects loaded first so i hope this is somewhat clear to you guys for initial load these are just some examples of the activities and tasks again i've added the programs and the t codes involved for example, we have initial load of AUFK, which deals with orders in SAP. Initial load of FICO postings, comparison of actual and expected CO posting because uh, definitely the balances there or the documents in the source system compared to what was replicated in CFIN, you want to do a comparison to make sure there's no mismatch or leftover items. The same goes for troubleshooting initial load errors that may arise so you want to get those resolved and in terms of the comparison or available reports programs that you can use they're listed over here here you'll see in the screenshot that i do have the option to monitor simulation of mapping that's what i select as well as the initial load group and the results would appear on the right hand side so this is not AIF, it's an SPRO transaction and it's something that you can use for monitoring of initial load. Next is an example of the comparison reports available. This is the comparison of FI balances. You see that you can specify the source system as well as filters if you need, as well as the currency type for comparison, whether you're dealing with company code currency, transaction currency, or group currency in terms of the comparison. Now that we've covered initial load, we're going to move on to the last one, which is real-time replication. And that's when you're done transferring the bulk of data to CFIN. This time you want to run or open the real-time replication such that when you post an invoice in the source system, it will be immediately replicated to CFIN. So again, this is where I mentioned that initial load should have been performed and tested successfully. And we want to trigger the real-time functionality for CFIN. Some examples of these activities and tasks would be the following. So you do have a bit of a configuration involved for the source system. If you want to uh, set the initial load finish indicator in this table in the source system, 
You can also set up the COPPA or replication of source COPPA document, validation of COPPA characteristics. Uh, this is basically in terms of profitability analysis and its need to be in central finance. You also have triggering checking of the following objects or tables that will be replicated in the target system. And in terms of central payments functionality, which we discussed a while ago, if you want to set it up, there are, of course, prerequisites involved. And because you have enabled real-time replication, you do want to make sure that you're able to monitor and troubleshoot errors in the target system. Here are a couple of example screenshots. This first screenshot is an example of SLT, wherein real-time replication is ongoing. So here I'm replicating uh, internal orders. Uh, it's current phases in replication and the details tells me that it's replicating data. So this is SLT. And an example of configuration related to central payments activation, you do have it here. This is through SPRO where you mentioned the logical system, the source company code as well as the scope. You see that I have the selection over here. And in terms of an example of a replicated document in central finance, this is a view in the target system already. And you'll notice that if you click on the header details, you should see the sender fields over here, as well as the reprocessing status code field, which is there in case there is a reverse and repose scenario. For example, there are corrections that will need you to reverse the document in central finance and have it reposted. So these are just um, a couple of example scenarios that may happen and how this can be resolved in central finance. There is also a concept of document drawback such that when you view this document, you should be able to draw back to the source document as well. Next, for the architecture overview and connection and error monitor and summary, these are just a couple of tables that you can use to visualize. This should help you visualize the comparisons between objects, what is available for the connection, error monitoring, when it comes to smoke tests, initial load versus real-time replication. So there are a couple of slight differences, but overall, when we are done with the smoke test, the initial load, Real-time replication should cover both SLT and AIF. Lastly, I wanted to add information on central finance for non-SAP systems. So because of this non-SAP system capability, you might have concerns on how the data could be structured in a way that SAP will readily understand. Um, of course, there might be struggles there. And in case you're wondering or in case you're curious, there are pre-built solutions. They are from Magnitude and that will help ease those integration concerns. So it would cater for both SAP and non-SAP systems. If you want to know more about it, you can search for this. So SAP Central Finance Solution Extensions from Magnitude. And I can discuss this more in a later video or another blog post. But for now, you can take note of some of the following data sources that are covered. So you have SAP, you have Oracle, PeopleSoft, NetSuite, Microsoft Dynamics, Workday, and for universal flat file format. So for example, if you have a legacy system that is a .NET application or it's something that the company has built from scratch as their own uh, program, then you can make use of universal flat file format just so you're able to bring the data over to central finance. So that's just an example. And again, if you have, if you're interested in some of the references or helpful links, I have linked them over here. Please feel free to browse through them. I think we are done with part two. I hope this helps you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.